I was a bit skeptical of these things. So they marched into my lab one day with a red carpet, a Turkish carpet, under their arm. Bang, bang, bang on the door. Uh, I knew that was special because the students didn't usually knock at the door. They just burst in, you know. Uh, the, us the usual way that they do it, I didn't mind because they didn't know, they didn't mean it badly with me. And I was just doing a tricky little operation, a very tricky one, standing at the bench there. And they marched in and stood in front of me with their Turkish rug rolled up under there. So I looked round to them and said, gentlemen, uh, the honor of this reception committee? Why? Why we come? So they said, we come to murder you. <laughs> this was in Chicago. Well, I said, uh, OK, do it as painlessly as you can. I see you bought a red rug. What's that to do with murder? Oh, they said, that's so that you can pray before you go and meet your creator. So I said, well, you know, I can pray without a red rug. But if you want me to make me comfortable, I'm certainly obliged. So they put the red rug down on the floor. And now they said, we'll tell you why. What you've said about God creating matter and God creating life is from today on bunkum. They didn't use the word, British word bunkum. They used something else, which I wouldn't like to say in front of you. But uh, that's what they meant. So I said, OK, just tell me all about it now and carried on with my experiment. So their spokesman started. He said, you say that God made life, don't you? So I said, yes. Well, he says, all wrong. Because down around the corner there, Saul Spiegelman's done it. Oh, I said, that's, uh, that's just wonderful. So I, suppose you, so I suppose you think that Saul Spiegelman's God. Oh, yes, they said. That's just what we've come to tell you, that man, that man is God and that he did a job. So I said, well, before men were, who did it? Well, they said, well, we're working on that problem just now. No doubt we'll, we'll get, no, we'll get a, an idea later. And I said, well, tell me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, no, it wasn't any ladies, gentlemen. Tell me, gentlemen, how did he do it? Oh, they said it's very complicated biochemistry. So I said, well, just tell me a bit about it. Give me the principles of it. Oh, they said, you know, he blocked certain groups and he opened certain groups and he worked two and a half, two and a half, three years on it. And after very complicated chemistry, he did get out his virus which replicated. Well, I said, that's very nice. Uh, what are you arguing about with me then? Well, he said, God didn't do it. Well, I said, who did then? He said, Saul Spiegelman. Well, I said, now that's very interesting. How did he do it? So they didn't really know, you know, they're a bit lost on this. So I said, look, tell me one thing. Did he put it into a wearing blender and turn it up to 20,000 revolutions per minute and, and out came his virus? No, sir, that would be an insult to the skill, they said, of Saul Spiegelman. Oh, I said, it was really made, it was really made by the influence of know-how and skill on the matter which he had in hand. So he looked a bit blank at this. Well, I said, it wasn't made by stochastic chemistry, was it? By chance chemistry. And they said, no, sir. They're getting polite now, you see. So, um, <laughs> so um, well, I said, now tell me again, how did he do it? Well, he stuck the pieces together right, they said. Well, I said, could they have gone together wrong? Oh, yes, he said, they could have gone together wrong. Well, I said, and Sarge Spiegelman saw that the wrong didn't happen, that the right did. He said, yes. Well, I said, look here, now you fellas, you sit down. We got to a position where we can talk to one another. What you're saying is this, and I wrote this up on the board. You're saying, as evolutionists, you're saying that matter plus time plus energy, okay, equals life. And they said, yes, sir. Time plus matter plus energy equals life. So I said, well, that's really interesting. You got any proof of that? Well, sir, it takes a long time. Well, I said, OK, I'll accept that. But how could you do it a bit quicker? So they didn't really know. Well, I said, do it as Saul Spiegelman did. Let's get, get on to this straight and do it. Saul Spiegelman did it by this formula, a bit different from yours. He took matter plus time plus energy plus concept or skill or know-how 
equals life. So I said, you've always left out the concept of skill in your formulae. And you've never got a result. And no scientist would ever dream of trying to do it the evolutionary way. That is, by flooding matter with time alone, an energy, unrectified energy alone, would he? They've tried so long, and they know it doesn't happen. Every sardine can, which is an open system, with ideal conditions for the production of spontaneous generation, no, of, no one of the millions of cans has ever done it. You don't think that if you do an experiment a billion times and leave them for a hundred years and it doesn't work, you still don't put that up and teach that to kids, do you? Oh, he said, we do. Well, I said, they're doing it in communist Russia and been doing it a long time. Have they ever had a result? No. Have you ever had a result here? No. Well, I said, what are you talking about? You're not talking about experiment. And I'm interested in experiment. But if you come to me and say, matter plus time plus energy plus Saul Spiegelman equals life, I'm 100% with you. Now, before Saul Spiegelman was, how could it have been done? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> you know, those boys, they were nice boys, and you could talk to them. No, they were. They were perfect gentlemen to me, and they wanted to give me a Turkish rug, you see. This was their way of doing it. So I do, I was very fond of them. And I saw some of them the other day when I was in some of, the, of my former class there in Illinois when I was there. You see, the difficulty is uh, that of learning things wrong in one's youth. The Bible states, and I don't wish to talk about religion, but they always throw us into the religious camp. But I will say this in self-defense. It does say, and all the old religions altogether say, that if you take matter and you give it a bit of time and you give it some energy and you apply concept to it, if the concept's right, out will pop life. You can prove it. You take that sardine can, and with this I finish, you take that sardine can, and it's an open system. It's hermetically sealed to keep programs out. But energy can go in, you can, you can heat it, and energy can be taken out as you like, and you can cool it. So from the point of view of thermodynamics, it's an open system. Now, if you've done that experiment billions of times for hundreds of years and you've never got a trace of life, then let's draw our conclusions. Now, I'm perfectly plain that if you've seen a thousand white swans, that's not a proof that there isn't a black one. Now, I know that even in this experiment, you say. It's an experiment by default. But I'm now going to give you an experiment by proof. If you take such a tin, such as a can for your use a tin in English, uh, if you take a tin or a can of sardines and you keep it absolutely sterile and you put in it with a hypodermic needle one virus with its information on it, that is with its concept, with its holistic program, the tin will blow up with life immediately. And that you can do as often as you like. If you put any form of life's program or concept, or if you like, logos into it, it'll produce generation of life immediately and regularly and experimentally. Now, the creationist says, in effect, that scientifically, if you want to get life, you've got to take matter, You've got to take energy, and you've got to take a bit of time, and then you've got to add to it a bit of logos. If you add a lot of logos, you may get a man out. If you add a little logos, you may get a virus out. But with no logos, you'll get no life. And that's my position. I don't believe in creationism on religious grounds. 
When I became a Christian, I was for 20 years an evolutionist along with my professor, Professor Sir Gavin De Beer. But further study in the sciences brought me back to what the Holy Scriptures do say, and I found the two lined up. I would never ask you to teach creationism in the school on a metaphysical basis. I don't think you should. But I think you ought to teach the children evolution so that they understand evolutionists, the same as I've taught the Muslim religion to help people understand the Muslims. I don't believe the Muslim religion myself. There's a lot in it which is very valuable. But I learn it and know it to broaden the spectrum of my thought and to be able to help those who think that way. But on the other hand, I do insist that you teach the children something which is experimentally verifiable, and that certainly is creation. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your great patience with me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I realize that many of you have other things that are pressing, and so at this time, if you care to leave, you may do so. Those of you that have questions, if you'll pass them to these two aisles, perhaps a gentleman or two will stop by and pick them up. Appreciate your being here when you're going out. If you'll stop in the front, there's a book table, and you can take some of Dr. Wilds Wildersmith home with you and check these things out. Is this book the one that covers pretty much, pretty much what you covered tonight? Man's origin, man. Yeah.